Hello, my name is CJ and I'd like to tell you about a project I've been working on. This is a thrift store typewriter I bought and I used a rotary tool to grind off parts of letters and numbers so that this would become this. And the reason why I did that is best shown in these uh, characters right here, which I did not alter. And these are the dots, dashes, and slashes, and the zeros. And these are the more abstract looking marks, as opposed to the letter A, for example. And what I decided to do was take off parts so that they would look more like artist marks. Uh, something an artist might use to reconstruct an image, or in this case, to help rebuild language. Um, so in this example, I on the right, I chose the loop to keep and to grind off the rest. And I did that with every other character, or most of them, and ended up with this. And this is how they are arranged, um, you know, QWERTY style um, on the keyboard. I cannot rearrange how they're laid out. But I can rearrange them by how the marks look um, so that I could refer to this for if I'm reconstructing letters or numbers or images out of these parts. And so this is what a sentence looks like typed out with parts removed. And it's one of the most common things people type into a typewriter to test it out. And it's the quick brown dog, brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, this is a technique called overtyping. And the most popular example is to X over something when you make a mistake. But in this case, I'm using it to create new characters. So the S plus the V equals a new uh, character or glyph. And I use that to reconstruct letters, as shown here. And I wind up with tons and tons of glyphs of these overtyping samples. And so what I can do is I can go through these, and I can pull out the ones I like or that are similar, so that now I can I have a wide variety of E's that I can type with the typewriter and that are all about the same size as the E that the typewriter originally had. And then these are some E's that are slightly taller, twice as tall as a regular letter E, um, because I use the roller on the typewriter to um, stack characters. Here's another technique, it's called um, half spacing and what it allows for is that you can kind of cram these um, cram, cram letters together to uh, form a solid character and so the S and the V becomes uh, something that looks like a ligature or a monogram and so I type all those out too and have a uh, wide variety of these characters And so by using these techniques, I'm able to reconstruct the alphabet, both forwards, um, backwards, and even upside down. I've tried creating a sideways alphabet, and it didn't turn out as well, but I can keep trying. And I've also reconstructed the Cyrillic alphabet and also the Greek alphabet on the bottom, or at least these are my versions of them. And over here is a sample of just sort of taking that uh, component that's left and plugging them in to create a series of letters that are kind of similar. And I use this technique with what was once the dollar sign and I reconstruct the alphabet. Um, yeah, some of them I had to improvise because it didn't quite work. And I'm 
uh, such as the S, the J, and the Z, and I still haven't solved for X. And these are some little graphic design samples I made um, using the typewriter while the there was um, while the typewriter had a lot of ink build up in it. Um, so yeah. Okay, these are more like codes or ciphers or a semic language, which is um, kind of a abstract or made up language that you might see in a science fiction movie or, um, you know, a fantasy movie. And here are some more developed letters um, using patterns. Uh, the ones on the right are kind of trying to be symmetrical. Um, Here's some more patterns, more for like ornamentation. Um, but yeah, these would uh, complement other typings or just, you know, say you're doing a drawing of architecture or something, you might um, want to add some of these to it. Okay, this is a uh, diagram that shows, you know, um, just what can happen when you reduce about 50% off of each glyph. Uh, when you repeat them in patterns, you you definitely reduce the um, kind of the um, the density of these patterns so that they're not this you know really tight mesh, and um, you end up with much more recognizable patterns that could be used better for drawings or you know more for like grid based images like um, if you're into textiles or architecture mosaics um, or video game graphics um, old school uh, photoshop fill you know area fills that type of thing um, and also it helps strip away the meaning of symbols like the dollar sign that may not relate to your um, your work they might be incongruent with what you're drawing. So turning them into just, um, you know, more recognizable, repeatable patterns uh, can really help with the drawing. Here are some other, you know, pattern fills um, I've created. On the left are some half tones, and on the right are some more like cross hatching. And at the bottom right, you can see a pattern where, as I tightened it up at the bottom, um, a heart shape, a heart shape emerged that I had not planned and I could not have uh, foreseen happening. But that was an uh, that was an interesting surprise. Okay, here are some more repeated patterns, but these are also uh, 3D uh, images of you know, polyhedrons, um, but they look like mountains at the top and so could be used for making, you know, maps or video game uh, type of imagery. These are just some diagrams that kind of show at the top what it takes to make a little stick figure person and at the bottom are how to make the polyhedron from the, the previous slide. Okay, and here are some cartoon faces. And I think these demonstrate the versatility of altering glyphs versus, you know, just having a letter or number right in the center of a cartoon character's face. So yeah, when I grind it off uh, parts, it removes a lot of, you know, extraneous lines that, um, um, yeah, it just kept it too tied to the uh, Latin alphabet. So, yeah, these are more like the artist marks I mentioned before. And here are some more cartoon characters. And at the bottom, you can see they get a lot more glitchy. Um, yeah, if, if if you're typing on a typewriter, you'll um, 
you'll definitely wind up with a lot of glitches. So uh, yeah, you'll be making a lot of glitch art if you use a typewriter. Okay, here's a more developed drawing I did. And as you can see, I repeated a lot of uh, patterns and I used uh, a lot of the original unaltered, um, the 20% I mentioned before that um, did not need to be altered. And I mixed in a lot of my own characters, uh, my altered glyphs and it creates an image. I used, um, I wasn't trying too hard, but if you mix red ink and blue ink, you can get that sort of 3D image look. Okay, this is not entirely a typewriter drawing. This is hand-drawn in my sketchbook, and then I had typed some patterns onto a piece or a label, and I just uh, put the label inside of the, the sketchbook drawing and drew on top of it so that it all looked in uh, cohesive. Um, and also you can use pens to, to finish off those uh, incomplete sentences, like the one I showed earlier, and you can add flourishes and, uh, you know, it's a nice mix to uh, mix machine and person uh, in your lettering. Um, uh, because it has all the consistency of that mechanical spacing, but it has a handmade touch as well. Here's another sketchbook one. It's uh, like code is coming to life and becoming a character. Okay, these are uh, bits and pieces from a work in progress, uh, demonstrating my use of lettering within a drawing. Um, so yeah, this kind of brings those concepts together, the visual arts and the uh, typography. Okay, this is the typewriter. It was just the $15 thrift store typewriter. And since I altered the inside of it, the type slugs, I decided to alter the outside of it too. And so I added a lot of stickers and I actually paid more for the stickers than I did the typewriter. But um, yeah, you could see, you know, why not alter the outside um, if you've already altered the inside. And then I went out and took some glamour shots, some glamour photography of it. And these are the hand painted keys. And I'd like to leave with the video, but um, first I wanted to say thank you for watching my video uh, presentation. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.